What's going on guys? Welcome back. Another day, another project. And we just got this charge harness that came in the mail. Shout out to Endless Wiring for some clean work. So plans for today is to get this installed and possibly get this car running. I'm sure we're going to run into some issues, but we'll go ahead and get that taken care of as well. I'll post some clips down the line, keep you guys updated. It's a beautiful day out, so we need to make the most of it. I'll keep you guys posted. a little update on the civic uh we got it running but like the issues we mentioned earlier we're gonna have to address it yep that's oil all 30 dollars of it i'm gonna have to look into it i was looking at the oil filter and it's not from there but man i had it running for like five seconds and it purged everything out I'll keep you guys posted. So after a few tinkering, I was able to find the culprit. If you can see there, um, what I did was top off with whatever fluid I had left. I disconnected the spark and fuel so I can bypass the starter. I'll go ahead and give you guys an example of what I did, which is right here. And you can watch the oil pump out of the cylinder head and the block. Yep. Hello my fellow Kababayans, your boy Mike Fleezy, welcome back to the vlog. So we're recapping from last night, we found out where the oil was leaking, we found out why it's leaking, and if you haven't caught up to speed yet, it's because the previous owner that rebuilt the motor um, put the head gasket in wrong. Um, what's happening is basically the oil passage is blocked, and it's just forcing it out in all directions whatsoever. So today we're going to be removing the head hoping that I don't have to redo timing see if we can just um, bypass that but um, yeah we're gonna go ahead and take care of that and I'll keep you guys posted to give you a little update we already removed the upper portion of the valve train the only thing that remains are the valves and the valve springs we don't have to remove them because we already have access to the head bolts here in these holes i also want to remind you guys on proper cam and cam caps removal they are torqued to spec so you have to remove them with the outermost working towards the center that also applies to your head bolts reason being is to prevent warpage um, another thing when you do remove them, place them onto a nice working station in the order you remove them. It's easier to work with and you can identify which is the intake and exhaust. So the next thing we need to do is remove the head bolts, remove the head, inspect the head gasket and find out why it's doing what it's doing. So I'll go ahead and knock that out and then I'll keep you guys posted. <music> guys so we got the head off and immediately i saw why we were leaking so much oil the head gasket is still placed in the same orientation the previous owner placed it in and i'll go ahead and show you guys where it's leaking from so that right there is an oil passage you can see the head gasket not even surrounding it so whenever the head was on and we were building oil pressure all the oil would just leak out of here so i'll go ahead and flip the gasket place it the way it's supposed to be placed and show you the big difference Right here, you can already see the head gasket completely surrounded. So now that when we place the head back on, it's going to seal no problem. Um, you know, people can make this mistake with the head gasket. It looks like it's on correctly, even if it's not. 
So jobs like this and really any job you do, you have to pay attention to detail. So now the next move is clean everything up, place the gasket the way it's supposed to be placed, place the head back on. And with the head bolts, you're not supposed to reuse them because they are torqued to yield. But there is a tolerance level where you can measure with a micrometer and stuff like that. And with it not even having minimum of 10 second engine run, we're definitely going to be fine. So I'll go ahead and place them in, torque them down, put everything back together. And we'll go ahead and probably head to the parts store and get some fresh oil, you know, fire it back up and hope everything goes good. <laughs> So I'll go ahead and keep you guys posted. Hopefully she's running in the next few daters. All right guys, so we have the cylinder head installed. We already torqued it down. I'll just go ahead and go over the procedures with you. So with the removal, you wanted to start with the out in now you're gonna do it in reverse installation is gonna be from center work your way out so the torque sequence with every vehicle it's different sometimes you have to go three times around for Honda specifically it's just one time meaning you're just gonna torque straight to whatever the factory recommends so mine is at 61 so I'm gonna torque one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten um, other vehicles it's gonna be three times like that so you're gonna torque 10 first do your sequence you're gonna torque to 30 and then whatever the final number is so for Honda the head bolt torque specs is just 61 all right guys so now that you have your cylinder head torqued down and ready to go the next procedure is gonna be for you to install your cams and your cam caps but before you do that, you want to make sure that all your contact points are clean and free of debris or lubed up and ready for the cam to go in. So the reason why we recommend placing everything on a clean working station when we remove it so that it's easier for you to put everything back rather than having to remember which piece goes where. So we'll go ahead and knock this out and then get it installed right now. Hello? Right now. All right, so now that we have it installed, torque down to proper specs and in sequence we're going to button everything up starting with your cam sprockets timing belt distributor valve cover all that good jazz but before we can do that tonight it's going to be my stopping point it's getting really cold out i'm losing feeling in my fingertips and i have work in a few hours so with that being said i'll go ahead and catch you guys later all right guys recap from last night we have the head and the cams all properly torqued down and secured I did the timing belt off camera, which is fairly simple. The proper way to do it is you have to remove your crank pulley and your timing cover. But I, I basically did a shortcut. Um, before you remove it, you want to make sure you're at TDC. And I stuff rags on the belt to keep it from dropping on the crank pulley area. You can also tight strap the belt together to have that tension. Now once you do that, you can remove your upper portion of your timing belt, remove your cam sprockets, and as long as your timing belt doesn't drop, you should be fine. And then of course, when you reinstall the cams, you want to make sure that they are at TDC as well. Uh, for every vehicle, it's different. You just have to make sure that they are in the correct position as well. So now I just have to tidy everything up, and I should be able to get her fired up in the next hour. I'll keep you guys posted.
Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. If you enjoyed what you're watching, feel free to like and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on that notification bell if you want to continue following me on my automotive journey. I'll catch you guys later. I'm out. <sighs>